Zeng Claude Felter, Preston Leinenbach, Otters TV. It's our series wrap up. Preston, you are well equipped with the broom after the Otters swept the Gateway Grizzlies out of Bossy Field Tuesday through Thursday. Impressive wins 3 2 in extra innings on Tuesday, 4 0 a shutout and free Donut Bank Donuts on Wednesday. And then a working distributor's thirsty Thursday, 7-1 victory to close it. Yeah, I think Evans, the Evans Otters got just about everything out of the series that they wanted. <laughs> Three wins. Three wins with a sweep. The donuts. And uh, some good offense. Some nice power. We saw a lot of home runs. Decent pitching as well. Cole Grafer making the start in tonight's series finale after coming off the IEL. And had his best outing as an Otter this year. Really impressive. We'll get to Thursday in a second. But mm -hmm. first, the series started with Elijah McNamee with mm -hmm. the walk-off win in the 10th that avoided the home run derby. That's right. The second walk-off for him this season. And uh, he keeps coming through with those clutch hits. And, had again, kind of that early lull in the season. But now he's really coming around. And uh, being the middle of the order bat that as the fans and the coaches have to do for him to be. Wednesday was Dakota Phillips. It was a scoreless game. Dakota Phillips with the go-ahead RBI, and then Bryce Titton came in after him with the three-run mm -hmm. bomb. Yeah, Dakota Phillips continued to be clutch as he has throughout the last few weeks. Bryce Titton really needed that for his offensive season, kind of catapult him in the right direction. And, of course, it's always nice to see run support in, in, the, in the backing of the pitching staff. Interesting pitching situation on Wednesday. Marty Anderson has to leave the mm -hmm. game early. He was dealing... In comes Austin Gossman, the Southern Indiana product, who I have seen a handful of times in the spring. Pitched really well. Three shutout innings. He struck out five. Yeah, for him making his professional debut, no nerves or butterflies for him for what we saw on the mound. And it was just impressive because, again, as we kind of talked to him ahead of time for Otters TV before that series finale game on Thursday here, talked about how he didn't have a chance to warm up in the bullpen or right. throw off flat ground to kind of get loose. He had to go right on into the game because of injury to Marty Anderson, or precautionary reasons, should I say. And basically, I obviously gives me warm-up pitches as he needed, but had to be basically thrown into the fire. Right, right. And so what a way to start for Austin Gossman. And then the series finale on Thursday, 3,559 to date the biggest crowd on a working distributor's Thirsty Thursday. Not only was it that, it was Evan the Otter's birthday on National Mascot Day, plus it was the 106th anniversary of Bossy Field. So what a fun atmosphere. Yeah, just a big time celebratory night here at the ballpark. And again, we wish we could have celebrated in person with the 105th anniversary last year. We did that virtually, of course, with the uh, throwback game that we, you and I did. The only two people in the stands that what? night. What a boost in the attendance <laughs> over a year span and on what June we did, We went out to the city and we brought all those people in. Right. That's exactly <laughs> what happened. But no, and it was great. And of course, Evan the Otter celebrating his birthday. I think we did the math right. Debuted in 97, 24 years old now. Right. And, uh, Steve course, Tassler told us that. Right. That Evan the Otter was not around in 95 and 96. So mm -hmm. what did the fans do back those right. first two seasons? <laughs> and then, of course, getting his birthday cake and candles. You had some of the cookie cake. How was it? Very good. N cookie cake, I've never had a bad cookie cake. And I've never had a bad Thirsty Thursday at the ballpark. And it really helps when you can get two three-run homers. Elijah McNamee, again, it was the Elijah McNamee series offensively. He had a three-run bomb in the first inning to make it 3-0. And then J.R. Davis, a three-run bomb of his own later in the game to make it 7-0. Yeah, it was a very exciting game again with the power on offense. McNamee, you don't really think of him so from what we've seen so far with the power. That was a big time hit for him. And J.R. Davis, he does have some power. He has shown that a couple times already this year. Uh, he's kind of small in the height, but he's, he's thick. He's built, and he can obviously crush it a long way when he centers one up. I know it's still middle of June, but you can't help but look at the standings. And right now, mm -hmm. the Otters division, it's very top-heavy. You have mm -hmm. the Evansville Otters currently leading through this series recap with a 14-6 and six record. One game behind, it's the Florence Yalls at 13-7 and seven with Southern Illinois and then Gateway at the bottom. Right. It, it, right now, it's developing to be a, a two-horse race in the West Division. Now, it's so early. That could change. As we know, baseball, there's a lot of times for teams to get streaky, hot, and cold. But right now, yeah, it's a two-horse race, at least in the West Division. Ryan Brown called the game with Bill McCune on Otters Digital Network on Frontier League Live TV. Ryan, any observations from this three-game sweep of Gateway? If I could add one going back to Sunday night's game, okay. how about four consecutive starts from Otters pitching 
first four innings scoreless in each. I think that was a big shot in the arm after a tough turn through the rotation prior to that. And what has to help with success is then you have the scoreless starts mm -hmm. and then the offense showing up very early. That's right. Sometimes you have to just keep your team in it as a starting pitcher, allow that offense to kind of develop maybe the second or third time through the order once they get a feel for the opposing starter pitcher. I think we saw a little bit of that here today and it gives the bullpen a lot of rest because uh, again, there's been a few times going to that last turn of the rotation that Ryan touched on where they did, the, the staff couldn't go to the bullpen too early. So they had to ask those guys, yeah, you've been roughed up early, but we need you to ease some innings. So we're sitting right here in front of this uh, clipping from the Sunday Courier and Press in 1956. It was right before opening day for the 1956 Evansville Braves of the 3I League. They were Class B of the Braves organization back then. They actually won the 3I League title that year. And it's 50s night at the ballpark on Friday, the series opener against the Windy City Thunderbolts. We're throwing it back. Now, last year we did just a 90s night, or should I say two years ago now, in 2019. Right. That was successful, so we thought, we well, let's expand to some other decades. So now, tomorrow night on Friday, 50s night, then later on will be 70s, and then a return to the 90s at the, toward the end of the season. But the 50s night should be exciting. With 50s music and pregame. Entertainment. Entertainment. <laughs> Not just the first pitch. Not just my pregame announcements, but we have an Elvis cover artist who will be at the ballpark pregame singing some of the all-time classics. That's exactly right, from the uh, original Elvis hits back in the 50s. Right, so yeah, 1950s Elvis, not 1970s Elvis. And one other fun fact, the last Elvis Presley concert in the great state of Indiana back at Market Square Arena in Indianapolis. The more you know there, Saturday, I'm really looking forward to it's the African American Museum of Evansville salute to the Negro Leagues special mm -hmm. jerseys and then post game fireworks. Yeah, the first fireworks show post game of this season, which we all know is a really dazzling big time display. It's not awesome. the little fireworks you get uh, across the street that we saw the street, during the game yeah. tonight. No, it's gonna be a big time display. But in terms of the ne salute to the Negro Leagues night, it's gonna be awesome to kind of touch base with not only the celebration but the history of the game and how big of a role the Negro Leagues really had with baseball and of course celebrating our own now late clubhouse manager Sam Hartsfield as well. Sammy uh, Hartsfield, what a man. And uh, so that's going to be a, this going to be our overall just a fun night here at the ballpark and I think a really good way to I guess kind of kick in the summer season officially next week. Right and he, the series finale the ninth game of what is a nine game and ten day homestand. The stand. finish line's almost here. The finish line is almost there on Sunday. It's a 5.05 first pitch time for the second dog days of summer. Yeah, bring your dogs out. And not only that, discounted hot dogs at the concession stand. So you can't beat that. Bring your best friend, your furry friend, and get a nice little ballpark hot dog at a cheap price. Ryan, what's better, being able to bring your pet to the game or having discounted hot dogs? Ooh, really tough question. We got to go with the hot dogs, though. I agree, hot dogs. Yeah, no cleanup after yeah. the hot dogs unless you spill ketchup on your shirt. So tickets are still available at EvansvilleOtters.com or give Trevor at the box office call at 812-435-8686. We'll see you at the ballpark for Ryan Brown, Preston Leinenbach, Eugene. I'm Zane Clotfelter. This has been Otters TV.